Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we're going to be going over doing the finishing work on this whitetail deer. We're going to be using epoxy to go around and fill in around the eyes. We're going to be creating a nictitating membrane. We're also going to be putting in the caruncle. Uh, we'll be uh, finishing out the tear duct, doing the uh, inside of the nostrils and actually texturing those pad. And what this is, this is uh, prepping this deer, getting it ready to do the airbrushing and uh, getting it all painted up. If y'all haven't hit the subscribe button, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, give this video a like. It helps out my channel. Um, I'm going to be using a two-part epoxy called Epoxy Sculpt and some epoxy safety solvent we have here. And I'm also going to be using two different types of modeling tools. And I'm going to go over and show you how to use these tools and how to uh, create all this uh, lifelike material here inside these eyes and in the tear duct and in the nose. So y'all stick around here. We're fixing to get this video started. All right, guys. The first thing we're going to be doing is... We're going to be taking a modeling tool, and uh, you can use a metal pick tool. Um, you can also use uh, some type of like a toothpick or a wooden uh, modeling tool. If On these glass eyes, if you use a metal pick tool, be very careful. Don't use the point of the tool itself to clean the eye. Just, I always just kind of use the side. But what you want to do, you want to go in here, and if there's any uh, leftover hide paste or uh, clay around the eye, you just want to take your modeling tool and just kind of scrape it off. But like I said, I'm, I'm not using the point of this tool. I'm using the edge of it because on these glass eyes, you will you'll scratch them up with these metal tools. Um, if you're first starting out and you don't feel comfortable trying this with a metal tool, like I said, get you a, a, a lot of people use like a bamboo or, or just a wooden modeling tool. But you just want to go around the, the edge of these eyelids and just get all this cleaned up. What we're doing, we're preparing, getting this prepared to uh, take the epoxy that we're going to be using to fill in the, there's a gap between the skin and the eye. As this skin dries down, you want to, you want to keep your, you want to take it as it's drying, especially like on the second day work, you want to push this skin up and keep it up tight against this glass. But as it, over time, as it dries, you're going to get a little bit of a gap in there. And in my personal opinion, I, I would like, I'd rather there be just a, a tad bit of a gap. That way, as you'll see here in the video, I'll lay that epoxy in this gap right in here, and I'll actually, I'll, I'll take a modeling tool and I'll cut it and I'll, I'll make like a little ditch, especially right here in the bottom. And then what I'll do is, once that ditch is made into this lower eyelid, I'll come back after I do the painting and uh, I'll take some clear, uh, it's like a polyurethane, I'll take a I'll take a small artist brush and I'll put a I'll put a little small bead of that clear gloss inside this ditch and it'll give a the uh, lifelike appearance of a of a deer's tears in his eyes. It'll be, give it that wet look. But you just like I said, you just want to go around, scrape all this off, get it cleaned off. Sometimes you have to you can tip this eye around a little bit so you can get. You can see up under it, get all this out under there. And I don't know if y'all can tell in this video, but this, this clay and stuff, it'll, it'll kind of stick to this glass pretty good. So you got to kind of get a little aggressive with it. Like I said, don't don't use the tip of your your tool. Just use the edge of it. What we want to do is just we want to go around and get this cleaned off. And if you can see. Right here in the front corner of this eye, I've got a pin. Right in here. And right where this pin is, this is where your car uncle and your initiating membrane is going to be put in. I'll go over that process and show you how we're going to build that here in a few minutes. So let's just finish getting this eye cleaned up. Just get all this residue off. You want to make sure you clean all this off before the epoxy because it just makes it, after you paint the deer, do the finish work, just everything, you pretty much got everything cleaned up. You just have to Take your eye protect. I'll use a eye protect over this eye when I get ready to paint. I'll just take a, a paintbrush and I'll just put a thin layer of a it's Bowman's eye protect. It's kind of it's a latex based 
material and I'll put it over this eye and it'll keep your paint once you airbrush it'll keep your paint from sticking to the glass all right so now what we're going to do is I'm going to be using the black epoxy sculpt and like I said it's a two-part epoxy so what we're going to do we're going to just reach in here and we're going to pinch this out I don't know just a little small round ball of epoxy ain't you don't need a whole lot and this is this is the part a this is the color part and then your part b which it's it's just a it's kind of like your hardener you want to get the same size piece as the is the part a you want equal amounts so what we're going to do is we're going to take these equal amounts make us two little balls and what i like to do is just kind of roll them out into a little small i don't know about to it's a little round roll there and we're going to put these two together and then we're going to twist them and what that's going to do once we twist them we're just going to start mixing them kneading them mixing them together and just after just a few seconds you can see it the whole thing will turn black it'll also turn your fingers black too <laughs> but just keep kneading it together you want it mixed up real good and what we're going to do we're going to take our modeling tool now that we've got this eye clean and we're going to come in and we're going to put this epoxy scup down on the lower part of this lid all the way around and if we got any gaps up here in the front you usually won't have no gaps at the back but if you do you can just go all around the side and fill it in Okay, once we got it kneaded together, I'm just going to take and pinch me off just another little small piece off of that. And I'm going to roll it out into another small roll. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it and I'm going to lay it in this, just lay it down here in this bottom lid, right under the eye. And I'm going to take my modeling tool and I have this, uh, safety solvent here and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dip the tip of this safety solvent I'm going to dip the tip of my tool down into it what, it's, what that's going to do is that's going to prevent this epoxy from sticking to my tool as I, as I lay this down into the bottom of this eye and you just want to take and work this down in with your modeling tool just keep going, go all the way around this eye and work it down in there and it's not going to take a whole lot to get this to go down in the eye. Gonna keep working it around this uh this safety solvent it, it will soften this epoxy up a little bit sometimes it makes it easier to work with but there are some points here where you're going to put it in you, you don't really want it real real thin you want it to stay that thick consistency because it's just it'll, it's easier to pack down in there so try not to get too much on here because it'll get so soft it, when you mash on it, it'll just keep sinking up inside the down in this crack, it'll keep squirting out in different places. We'll just keep working that around. Like I said, just come up, up over in the top, in the back. If you got any spots up in there that needs anything, just kind of work you some up in there. 
but the goal is here to make this transition between this skin and this eye look like the uh, kind of like the eyeball is just kind of floating above that lower lid and that gap that I was talking about cutting in which I'm fixing to do right here uh, that gap it there that it's kind of like, like I said it's like a ditch that's going to help you be able to uh, put that gloss in there and give it that wet look I don't want to move the camera here and get y'all a little better angle so y'all stick stick with me right, I moved the camera here so I can try to give y'all a little bit better angle what we're going to do now, we're going to take this sculpting tool and we're going to go right around here we're going to cut us a ditch in the bottom of this eyelid and what that's going to do, that's going to allow me to uh, to put that gloss in there and give it that, that wet look around that eye alright, we got that, pretty much got the bottom part of the eye finished so now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to put in the uh, nictitating membrane at the front of this eye. So let me grab some more epoxy sculpt here and we'll start putting it in. Alright, what I like to do now... Is I like to take and uh, just give me a little roll of epoxy just lay it out flat and put it in here in the front corner of this eye then what we're going to do is take our modeling tool and you need to if, if you're just starting out doing this you need to get some reference pictures and look at those reference pictures that way you kind of get an idea of what the nictitating membrane looks like in the front corner of this deer's eye we're just going to kind of flatten it out and these are not very thick I mean if you ever when you cape out a deer's head if you'll watch when you take the eye skin off you'll see this nictitating membrane right here around the front corner of this deer's eye and like I said you want to smooth these out kind of keep them kind of small alright once you get that laid in there kind of the way you want it I always build mine bigger than what it actually is supposed to be. And then what I'll do is I'll take my modeling tool and I'll cut it out. I'll cut off the excess and cut it out. And then whatever whatever you have left over on the eye, just take your tool and be very careful and just kind of scrape it and remove it off of there. Alright. Once we get that part of it made, get the tear duct in, what I like to do is I'll take a paintbrush. And a little bit of, of that uh, safety solvent. I'll dip my paintbrush down in it. And what I like to do is, I like to get out here on this leading edge of this eyeball right here at that little ditch I made and run that safety solvent around there. And what that'll do, that'll help smooth that epoxy out. And I'll do the same thing at the front corner here where the nictitating membrane is. And what, I, what, I, what I'm trying to achieve here is I'm just wanting to flatten this out and let it let it kind of flow into the eyeball you want it all to look like it flows together you don't want no tool marks left in your epoxy no, no little gouges you just want everything to look smooth alright now that we got that worked in, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some, some brown, the, uh, the brown epoxy sculpt, and I'm going to do the same thing I did with the black. I'm going to roll me out two balls. Probably not going to, I'm not going to need as much as I did for the black, 
That side, the size rolls I showed you for the for the black is to do both sides of the deer, both eyes. So the brown, you're going to probably, you're only going to need about half of that to do the caruncle. And the caruncle is a little notch. It's a little triangle shaped notch at the front of the eye. And uh, it sits right in between the skin of the eye and the nictitating membrane. And you don't have to put this part in. It's just, if you look at your reference pictures, you'll, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about in the reference picture. This is just part of the deer. It just gives it, it's a little more realism to it, to the eye. Some people, people, some people put it in, some people don't. I just like the way it looks, so I put it in. It don't take for just a minute to put it back in. Especially once you've already done the, uh, you've done the dictating membrane, you can just go in here and lay this piece in. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get me a little small piece and put it on the tip end of my tool. And it's gonna go right in the front corner of this deer's eye. I'm just gonna take my tool and just lay it right in there. And like I said, you need to look at your reference pictures because this part right here is triangle shaped. And you'll have, to, you'll have to look at your picture so you know how to, to carve the shape with your sculpting tool here in the front of this deer's eye. What I do, I just take my tool and kind of try to get that, that triangle shape started. Work it in there. Like I said, you don't want any tool marks, so you want to try to go with, be as smooth as possible with this. And just kind of press it down in there and work it in. And same as the uh, nictitating membrane, I'll kind of go oversize with this. And then once I get it like I want it, I'll, I'll cut it down and make it a little smaller. What I do by that, I just turn my, my sculpting tool, I'll turn it flat like a knife, and whatever angle I want, I'll run it that way from the top, and then I'll start at the bottom and do the same thing at the bottom. And then all you have to do is come back with your brush, with your paintbrush, once you get it cut in there, Put you a little bit of safety solvent on it and just kind of go in here and kind of blend it in with the rest of it. Alright, I had to go get me a different brush here to blend this in. But like I said, you want to make sure that there ain't no tool marks in this thing. You want a good smooth transition.
And once you get the tool marks out, that's pretty much all there is to doing the clay work on the eye or the epoxy work here on the eye. All right, I'm gonna move the camera around now. We're gonna start doing the uh, interior of the nostril and doing the nose pad. So y'all stick around here. I'll be right back with you. All right, guys, we got the epoxy work done around the eyes and I got the nictitating membrane put in. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some uh, some natural colored epoxy sculpt and I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna show you how I, I close in the tear ducts here and how I do the detail work inside the nostril. So y'all stick around here and I'm gonna reset up the camera and get this mixed up and uh, we'll get started. All right, guys, I've took in a, uh, this right here is what the natural epoxy sculpt looks like. It's just a, it's just gray and it's two parts. I mix me up two little small balls, about the size of a peanut m and I guess you would say. And the reason I, I done this size is I'm gonna use this to, uh, I'm gonna use this to finish out around the tear duct and the inside the inside of the nostril and around the mouth and lip line. So let's, we're gonna do one thing at a time here. I'm gonna, we're gonna do the tear duct first. I'm gonna show you how, how I finish it out. And we'll move on to the inner nostril and then we'll do the lip line. So what you want to do is just knead this together and mix it up like you, just like you did for all the rest of it. And uh, you're not going to need no safety solvent for this. I like to use this dry. This is just something I've learned over the years doing the tear duct to make it look more natural. You don't want it to look um, shiny and slick. You want it to, to have some texture to it down inside of here. So what I'm going to do is, once I get this kneaded up, and this is real quick, real simple, once you get the hang of it and kind of get the idea, learn how much epoxy you need to, to pull out of your little ball here to, to put down inside of the tear duct, this goes pretty quick. All right, so all we're gonna do is just take a little small, this is pretty much like a, almost a BB sized piece of epoxy that I'm gonna be applying down in here. And I'm just gonna take this ball and kind of roll it out in a little, cylindrical shape here and you can see how big that is it's not very big at all and i'm gonna take my tool and i'm gonna start up here at the very top and i'm just gonna lay that down in there and like i said you're not gonna use no safety solvent and one of the things the safety solvent's used for is to keep it from sticking to your modeling tool but you just want to take the tip of this tool now and just press it down into that tear duct and it'll kind of squirt down in there. You just want to make sure, make sure you keep these hairs out of it. But work it down in there. If you got any gaps up here, just kind of let it fill them gaps in. And I usually start at the top, work it in, and then come back from the bottom and work my way from the bottom back to the top. Filling in any, any void you got here. All right, once you get that filled in, just take your, take your modeling tool and turn it flat not like a knife on its edge, but turn it flat and I start at the top and just drag it down through the tear duct. And go back. If you got any excess that's in the hair, take your modeling tool, take the tip of it, and just remove any excess that may be stuck in the hair out here on the outside edges. And then there again, make sure like any of these whiskers you got on the side, just make sure you don't have none of them pinched down in there. And just work out your excess. And a lot of times what I'll do, I'll just take my finger and just kind of rub down through there, kind of smooth it out and pack it in. And once you get that laid in there, you'll have a natural looking tear duct. All right, I'm gonna move the camera around here now. We're gonna do the nostrils next, so y'all stick around. I'll be right back with you. All right, guys, now we're gonna move on to the uh, nostril. And what we're gonna do is, once you pull your paper towel or plastic out of the nostril from where you mounted it, you just want to go in here and clean it up, make sure that skin's laying flat down inside. I usually like to Dremel back with a Dremel tool. Well, you can see I got this tool down in here. I'm, that's probably about a good inch of nostril down in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the same gray epoxy sculpt. I'm going to pinch me off a little small piece, roll it out. And what, usually what I try to do, once I get it rolled out, it'll be a little bit bigger piece. I'll just stick it up in that deer's nose, kind of work it up in there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my my uh, my sculpting tool, and I'm actually I'm gonna apply 
some safety solvent to the tip of it so the epoxy won't stick. And I'm gonna just kind of stab right through the middle of that and I wanna work this epoxy on the inside wall of this nostril. And I'm gonna go all the way back inside of it. And uh, you're gonna have some come out. I mean, it's gonna, when you start jabbing this tool in there, it's kinda gonna squirt out, but you don't want, you want all your inner detail, like your hair of the skin, you, got, you want all that to show, so you don't wanna cover that up. Mainly what I'm, uh, what I'm blending in is where the skin stops and the foam starts inside of the nostril here. And same goes for right here in the front corner. I want to try to work this back. And I just want a thin layer to where that skin transitions into the foam. Because you're going to come back in here with your airbrush when you do your painting and paint the inside of this. You want this to be a flesh color. That's why I like to use the, the gray. Sometimes if I got it on hand, I'll, use, I'll have, they make the flesh color or the pink epoxy sculpt. It works very well too, but I got to where I've been buying this epoxy sculpt in big bulk containers, so I don't know if you can buy the pink in the big stuff or not. I always just, I've always bought it in the little small cups or whatever you want to call them. Like I said, you just want to work that down in there. And you want to be you want to be able to see all of your inner nose hairs there. You don't want to, you don't want to cover them up and block them off. All right. Once I get that work down in there, and kind of where I want it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a, a Q-tip, just a regular old, just a regular Q-tip, and I'm gonna dip it down in my safety solvent. And then I'm going to take this Q-tip and I'm just going to kind of, kind of work it down inside of the nose, just following that contour of, that I kind of cut in there with my sculpting tool when I just laid that down in there. And what this right here is going to do, it's going to allow you to, to smooth this epoxy sculpt out on the inner wall of that nose around where the septum would be. Like I said, you just want to work it down in there. If you have to, you can flip your Q-tip around, apply a little more epoxy sculpt. Just keep on pushing it back in there. And you just want a smooth transition here between the skin and the nose. Like I said, you're going to go on your airbrush and you're going to paint this a flesh color. So. And there we go. That, that, that inside of that nostril there is done. We just need to let that dry and it'll be ready to paint. All right, I'm gonna move the camera right here and we're gonna work on the lip line and uh, I'll be right back with you in just a few minutes. All right, guys, we're gonna finish out the uh, the lip line here with the bottom lip joins the nose pad. I always, when I mount my deer, I always like to leave the bottom lip showing. Um, I just think it it gives the mount a little more character. Some people, some people will tuck the Took the bottom lip all the way in, which that's fine. It's just whatever your preference is. But this is like the way I like to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the little, the gray epoxy sculpt like I just did for the nostrils. I'm going to lay it in here. And it's not going to take much. What I'll do, I'll take my modeling tool and just kind of work it around. And I'm pretty much creating an artificial lip here out of epoxy sculpt. And I just like to tuck it down in here. With my tool. And I always, I try not, don't cover up your actual lip. I, I'll tuck it down in there and I'll just keep pulling it away. Because I'm going to use that, my actual lip right there, kind of as my reference. As to where to, to end the lip over here on the, on the corners right here. I'm just going to take my tool and pull it around. Work that up in there. And I'm kind of going to, once I get this tucked in, the epoxy tucked down in the groove here of the lip line. I'm going to use my my modeling tool 
and I'm just going to go around and create and make it just look just like the lip. And I'm going to let it go all the way up and touch the nose pad up here. All right, once I get that done, I'm going to take my, uh, my safety solvent, which I got in a bottle here, and I'm just going to put some on the, the pad of my thumb, and I'm just going to rub it around this lip and kind of round it off. And, and let it kind of blend in with the original lip and with the nose pad. All right, now once I get that, get that step done, I'm gonna take my modeling tool and you wanna transition between this artificial lip and the nose pad. I mean, to make it look natural, you want it to look like the, the deer's got his mouth perched, you know, closed together here on his nose pad. So I'm just gonna take this modeling tool I'm going to very carefully, I'm going to come around here and I'm going to cut a lip line. And I'm going to start back in here in the back corner where the hair is. And I'm just going to work my way around. And I'm not really, I don't have this modeling tool laid flat. I've kind of got it up like I'm using it like a knife. Almost at a 45 degree angle here to the lip. And I'm bringing it around. And you can look at, if you got some good reference pictures of deer, you know, with a closed mouth looking from the front, that'll give you an idea how that goes. If you look on that reference picture also, or if you got a, a deer specimen there that you haven't uh, caped out yet, you'll notice right here in the front of this lip, that deer will have lines. It, there'll, be, there'll be lines going from, the, from where the lip, the top of the lip down to the, to the hair. So what I'll do, I'll take this modeling tool and I'm gonna cut these lines back in. And they're spaced out about a, I don't know, maybe a sixteenth inch apart. But I'm gonna go all the way back around. And what I'm doing, I'm, I'm giving this lip skin right here some detail, because you don't want it just to look smooth. I'm cutting them lines right around there. And then once I do that, um, I'll take that dry brush like I was talking about, the one I cut the bristles off of, And I'm gonna come in here. Like I said, that's a short bristle brush. I just took a pair of scissors and cut off and made them stiff, stiff on them up. And I'm gonna take this paintbrush and I'm just gonna very gently dab that epoxy sculpt. And what that's gonna do, that's just gonna give that a skin-like texture. It's gonna put little holes right there where I, where I cut those lines in. I'm gonna go right over the top of them. And, and the, the key to this is, I just I don't want this to look smooth. I want it to look kind of textured. And, uh, all right, that's got the lip line done. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move on around here and make sure we ain't got no gaps around the side of our mouths or no holes. And if we do, we're gonna take a little bit of epoxy and uh, fill those in. I'm gonna, I'll turn the deer, turn this around here, let y'all see what it looks like. And if I find one, I'll show you how I do it. All right. Okay, we're working on the side of the mouth now. And like I said, you just want to go around and make sure you don't have no gaps or nothing in the sides. Um, if you got a spot where you might have a, uh, a little hole or a little tore spot in the skin, you can do the same thing on the side of this mouth as you did inside that nostril or the lip, either one. You can lay some of this epoxy in here and just fill in Fill in these spots down inside the mouth right here. Just kind of work your epoxy down in there. And what, whenever I airbrush my deer, I always go in and I'll, I'll put some, uh, I'll airbrush some paint down in these lip lines right here. It just, to me, it just makes them look, look more natural. We're just going to cut that down in there. This is, this is pretty quick, pretty simple. Once you get your epoxy and stuff mixed up, it don't take long to, to lay this down in here. I think we're pretty good on this other side. I had one little spot there. A little small. 
It's kind of like a bad spot in the skin or something. I really don't know. All right, we're going to flip this thing up now. And uh, I'm going to show you how to texture the nose pad. And that's going to finish up our uh, our deer finishing video here. So y'all stick around here. Let me readjust the camera and this phone. I'll be right back with you. All right, guys. We've got our little our little no easy nose bottle here. Um, and this is what we're going to use. We're using Mod Podge to recreate the nodules on this deer's nose. So what I'm going to do is I got the got the deer flipped upside down here, and uh, I'm just going to take this little tool and I'm going to start out right here around the lip line. And I'm just going to put very small little dots. And what I'm doing, I'm re recreating the nodules here on the nose. And they're going to start off real small down here at the lip line. And as you go up the nose, the higher up you go, the bigger they're going to get until you get up on the top, like at the bridge part of the nose. And this is pretty quick, pretty simple. You just got to take your time. And try to make these... I, I usually try to follow the original pattern here on the nose. Because you don't want it to look like a golf ball with divots, you know, just perfect all the way around it. I try to kind of mix it up, like I said, wherever the natural dots are here on the nose. And, and a lot of these deer, just like this one here, it'll have hair on its nose down here and it'll have whiskers coming out. So kind of try to work your way around these whiskers, around the hairs. And uh, just keep moving around as you go. Like I said, they're going to get bigger as you go up. And especially like here, right here around the the nostril opening, they get they fairly good size. I try to keep them kind of small down at the bottom, and I go up bigger as I go towards the top here. And if you uh, if you happen to mess up or get one you don't like, you can always take a paper towel or a Q-tip and wipe it off and start over again. I don't I, if I have to wipe some off, I kind of let them dry for a few minutes before I start again because if you don't. This Mod Podge, it'll start running on you, and it'll your your nodules will start getting real long and ob, oblong shaped. Like I said, just don't take just a minute. Go around here and dob them in here. Once I get so far up this nose, I'll flip the form right side up and start from the top, work my way back down. Because if you ain't careful, your, your dots will start running downhill and getting oblong. and They'll all start kind of looking the same once you get them down in there. All right, I got the form flip right side up now, so I'm gonna come in here now and I'm gonna continue putting these dots on this nose. Like I said, just kind of go along here and follow your the original pattern. That's what I try to do. I mean, you're not gonna get it perfect, but you don't re you don't really want it to look perfect. You want it to, you know, from some of them be offset and in different places. Because on a, on a real deer's nose, you know, they're not perfect. They're gonna be they're gonna look different. Like I said, they're gonna have these deer are gonna have hair on their noses, so you're gonna want to work around that those hair patterns. This deer here, he's got some pretty long whiskers coming out of his nose. A lot of them will have. And as this dries, this lodge paw is just gonna turn clear, so it'll look a lot different once it dries down. But uh all right, that's got the nose pad done. So we're gonna move on here, and uh, this is pretty much gonna be it for the finished work. I'll be right back with y'all. Let me get the camera moved around here. I'll be right with you in a few minutes. All right, guys, I had to go back and look. After I moved this, I realized some of these ran together. This is what I was talking about by using a Q-tip. Just come in here. If you got some that run together, you don't like the way they look, just take a Q-tip and just kind of touch on them. And this Q-tip, it'll pick this Mod Podge right back up off of this deer nose. And what you can do, if you got some you don't like the way they look, just uh, pick them up with a Q-tip, 
and then just come back in with your bottle or whatever you use to texture them and put you another dot on here. And then once that dries down, you'll never know the difference. I don't move the camera around. I'll, talk, I'll get back with y'all in just a second. All right, guys, that's going to be it for the uh, deer finishing video. Um, as far as doing all the epoxy work, getting the eye work done, um, hope y'all got a little something out of this video. Uh, the next video coming up after this one is going to be the airbrushing. I'll actually go over and be airbrushing a deer and uh, showing you how to use the airbrush, how to mask the eye, and uh, any touch-up work you know to do on the eye, uh, painting inside the ears. So uh, I just want to tell y'all, if y'all hadn't hit that subscribe button, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Give this video a like helps out my channel and uh, if you have any questions just shoot them over to me here on youtube uh, in the comments i'll get back to them just as soon as i can and uh, as always thanks for watching and god bless